So we welcome uh, Professor Nobuhiko uh, Kawamoto from Hokkaido University, and he's going to tell us about the, the main approach of lattice acuity for n equals four n equals four superiors. Today I want to talk about this uh, four-dimensional supine-mix formulation of the lattice. Usually, this uh, exact solution of the lattice is a difficult issue. I've been working on this uh, art, art for subject for quite a long, long years, together with Alessandro Dada. This particular work is particular than that number. One of the major, uh, the, the way that is uh, the standard motivation is that to establish formulation to investigate non partality aspect of supersymmetric series in the data. If superparticle is discovered, this is immediately needed. But uh, people may, like Kawa and Kawai san, su su may not exist. Anyway, one of the secret claims is the fundamental origin of Suji breaking mechanism by regularization point of view. This is one of the major reasons that uh, we, we are just doing this for quite some time. Uh, in order to do that, we have to establish exact supersymmetry on the lattice. If it's not possible, what is the origin of it? That is the question. The role, the role of the lattice chiral Venus spaces double problem is an uh, state for the But what is the role of this chiral gradient problem? That is another question, which immediately comes in because we have to put the gradient on the lattice. So, and then another necessity is that the equal force diagnosis in four dimension is somehow required for major shift correspondence. Let me explain a very simple calculation in the beginning. <coughs> Let me define the formal difference operator, which is defined like this. Well, usually difference operator is the replacement of the differential operator, but here that is constant is simply for simplicity to be taken to divide. If I operate the difference operator for the product of two p, this is the definition. I add same term by one x plus n mu by two x, add and subtract, and then this expression can be written down in this. Way. As you can see, there is some shift coming in. So therefore. Uh, difference operator does not satisfy Leibniz rule for this distributive row of the operation. So th this is one one issue which is very crucial for the lattice foundation, lattice foundation. Now, there are two major obstacles for exact lattice supersymmetry. The one is just now I explained Leibniz rule breakdown of difference operator. Why is it problem? Let's, let's consider the simplest possible supersymmetric algebra, which is Q squared Hamiltonian. Hamiltonian is essentially a differential operator. If, I, if we want to put this formulation on the lattice, differential operator is replaced by the difference operator. A difference operator operation for the field does not satisfy the right needs rule. Why the supercharge operation satisfied like me too. So from the beginning, Suji is broke. So this is one of the major difficulties. How do we overcome this? And the second question, second problem is that whenever you put the fermions, massless fermions on the lattice, you get fermion copies. Supersymmetry need the same number of boson and fermions. So it, the number of the fermion increase immediately, so that uh, this is all another origin of supersymmetry. 
So how do we deal with this second problem too? Now we have proposed two formulations to attack these, to solve these two issues. The one is called link approach, which I explained today, is that as I explained, the difference operator gets this shift. Usually, supercharge operator does not get any shift, but let's assume it gets some shift as, as well. This is assumption or answer. The question is, can one, can one construct consistent theory in this way or not? That is a question. Then we say that it's possible to, to construct a consistent formulation. Then the formulation is called link, link approach formulation. That is because fermions and gauge field are on the link, which I will explain later. And uh, we have just formulated two dimensional n equal to two and three dimensional n equal to four minutes of this formulation. But today I will just explain n equal four, four dimensional young ways. There's an alternative approach because there was a problem in this formulation. Problem was uh, proposed by Gluckman Koch Cateral. We have solved later, but it's a difficulties. Because of this reason, we just uh, try to find out another formulation also. This is a formulation in the momentum space. Momentum conservation is changed into the function of the moment, that is momentum conservation. And then what it turns out is that if you choose proper function, exact Leibniz rule is, is satisfied. But with the product, is changing to the non-local product. So it's a non-local field theory. But otherwise, this is also the very nice formation, which I don't explain here. Uh, last conference of this one in Kyoto, I explained this story. <coughs> so let me briefly explain what is the strategy is. This is a two-dimensional n equal to two Suji algebra, which is formulated with gamma matrices. Two, in two dimension, gamma matrices is essentially power matrices. Since uh, QI and Q is related, this way why she is a charge conjugation matrix. And in two dimensional Euclidean case, she can be taken to be one. So that Q alpha i, i and alpha both can change from one to two so that it can be expanded by the gamma matrices in this way, which we call direct error twisting procedure. This supercharge relation is transformed into this way. And this is, we call it twisted to n equal to supersymmetry instead of this one. And then the strategy is to change this differential operator into difference operator in this way. And then further, in order to generalize to the gate, to include the gauge theory or Young-Mills case, this change, supercharge change into super connection and difference operator change into uh, link wire. This is a way how we just generalized this Suji algebra into the super connection formula. Now, why link? I will explain just now. It's the delta mu operation for this one, which I explained in the beginning. Now we are sure to introduce shift for the supercharge as well, like this. Then, supercharge is essentially differential with respect to the super coordinate, together with some super connection connection would be added if we just generalize it. And D D theta A operation, D D theta A operation passing through this first term, first field. Let's, uh, let's assume this is function of X, which is changed into X plus AA. 
So this relation seems to be needed. In the coordinate space, in the super coordinate space, it is uh, like x theta a, theta a x plus a. It's a uh, opposite orientation with respect to dd theta. So in order to interpret this expression, there are two ways to do it. One possibility is theta a and x are non-commutative with a shift to a. If you look at this relation, it's, it sounds reasonable interpretation. Another way of looking at it is that on the left hand side of on, on the right hand side of DC DD theta A or QA, the coordinate is X. On the left hand side it is X plus A, a which means that DD theta A or the QA is in between X and X plus A. Namely DD theta A gets link nature connecting two neighboring sites, X plus A, a and X. What is important is for the, for the supercharge, it's a order starting from the right hand to the left hand. So if I write this relation, it looks like this guy, this guy, if I look at this second term, this guy has a shift A because of this one. So that x, x plus A, shift A is added to this coordinate. Similarly, a mu is added because this is uh, supercharged, which has shift a a. So this is uh, interchange. So what I mean is that shift nature of the coordinate is, it can be introduced. And uh, this guy has a shift of the n mu, so that uh, it has this relation. But in order to be consistent, since it looks like matrix product, n mu should be, should be same as a plus a mu. So that is a consistency relation. Then let me repeat. Since we have introduced shift for the super, supercharge, correspondingly, this uh, gauge version of the extension get also shift. And then, if I this exists yes, for me. Because uh, anti commutator operation for the field gets two shifts add, adding up. So these are the consistency relations. There are another one which, which sat should satisfy this kind of relation. vector can be arbitrary, but we have nice solutions for this, these constraint relations. And since um, here I'll, te I'll take A to be arbitrary, then typically there are two typical solutions. One is symmetric and the other is asymmetric. And uh, uh, symmetric case, I take one half, one half, which means that this vector is pointing to the real side when this is original side. And uh, these four solutions are pointing to the real side. So <coughs> as you can see, Okay. 
As you can see that uh, this guy has a very unique nature because uh, it originally came from the supercharge and the super connection grading up. So essentially, Nabla is sitting here on the fermionic link we call it. This is a connection between original site and dual site. We are in this formulation. A is taken to be zero. Actually, it turns out that it is, it is equivalent to the old board construction of Kaplan et al. It is exactly the same. So their formulation is included in, in our formulation. However, there is some problem which was pointed out this gentleman. Suppose phi1 and phi2 doesn't have any shift. It's, uh, it looks like a diagonal matrix. So it's commutative. Phi1, phi2 is equal to phi2, phi1. But the introduction of the shift is asymmetric with respect to the change. So essentially, QA, phi1, phi2, QA, phi2, phi1 should be equal. But uh, since uh, the introduction of the shift is asymmetric, unless this is equal to that one, these two equations is not consistent. But we just say that these two terms are equivalent because the order of the product is interchanging. So Q, Q, QA phi, phi, I, phi I doesn't have any shift, but QA phi I has a shift because QA itself has a shift. So one can write this term <coughs> XA, X plus AA, where AA is added to shift for this field. But here, my J doesn't have a shift. Here is the same writing. So when you interchange the field, which has a shift, there should be some shift coming in there. So that is a general thing. <coughs> so we identify these two terms, which means that we can just interchange the product of the field with taking care of ordering, ordering of the shift. And that is uh, one interpretation. So we call it ordering equivalence class. But when we extend it to the Norwegian case, the story is shifting part can be interchanged in this way, but Norwegian nature still remains. Let's go to the n equal 4 in four dimensions. N equal 4 in four dimensional algebra can be written down in this way, where sigma mu is a four dimensional Minkowski generator. Ij change one, 1 to 4, and alpha beta dot change 1 to 2. This formulation, this algebra in four dimensions in a Euclidean case, can be generalized into gamma matrix. We are replaced to the sigma mu to gamma mu. Essentially, sigma mu is a power matrix plus one. But that can be interchanged into the gamma matrix. Now, since I have just twice, degree twice, to make it degree of freedom twice bigger, so that I need a relation Q bar and Q to truncate the increased degree. So this is a story. It's similar to a two-dimensional case. If I just replace the gamma matrix here, Q bar is related to Q in this way. Now, the proposal of the twisting in this four-dimensional case is that to, to expand this Q alpha i 
it to the gamma matrices like this. If I plug in this one into there with the keeping this relation, it turns out that supercharged relation is changed into this way. Now the supercharge is from spinner component, spinner representation to scalar vector tensor representation. This way. So the question is, what, uh, what are we doing? What, what, what is the meaning of the twisting procedure? Now, in four-dimensional Euclidean space, as the so-called symmetry, which is isomorphic to SU2 cross SU2, which we call the left-hand sector and the right-hand sector of SU2, or n equal force to the supersymmetry as the internal SU4 symmetry, which includes SO, SO4 as a subgroup, which is uh, uh, isomorphic to SU2, SU2, and one uh, I call I call it SU21 and the other SU22. The procedure of the twisting is that to change this counted, counted representation into 1, 2, 2, 2, 1 plus 1, 2 decomposition, which is called the twisting procedure, which was first proposed by Marcus. And this is essentially their care, same as their care twisting procedure. What is what the, what does it mean? Any perform shell gauge merge pet, massless shell gauge merge pet as a 14641 multiplicity depending on the helicity state. So we look at one four four six gauge merge pet in this way, bosonic sector and feminic sector. In feminic sector 4 times 2 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 8 components are here. So 16 components are satisfied. But the bosonic case, 6 plus 4 is 10. So it's lucky. And we need an auxiliary field, but uh, it's not discovered yet. Now, this 2 and 4 is wrapped by this uh, representation. The twisting procedure is the following thing for n equal for just to take the SU2L prime, the SU2R prime as a diagonal subgroup of SU2L2 cross SU2 one or SU2R cross SU2 two. For example, if I just look at this component, carotid is decomposed into two one and one two and 2-1 is direct product with this representation. It just generates singlet, triplet, doublet, doublet state, which we may call it rho plus scalar, uh, cellular component of the tensor, three component, and vector to two. So this is a feminine component of this coming from this sector. For the bosonic sector, sexted part, for example, can be divided into two scalar and one vector. Essentially, Jack Kera is doing is that this is so called angular momentum, and angular momentum coming from internal symmetry are combined to define another angular momentum. Therefore, Spinal suffix turns into the scalar vector tensor suffix. That's a strategy. As you can see, if I change the uh, supercharged matri matrix into the gamma matrix, and then, then I decompose into chiral sectors in this way, we, we can find out the Q plus Q, Q plus Q, Q plus rho sigma Q plus mu, which has exactly the same structure as this one, as you can see. So the Kera twisting procedure is nothing but the uh, second Marcus twisting procedure. And the anti chiral sector is pressed here. So the 
now the story is to try to embed this field into somewhere. Now, if we go back to here, this, these are the supercharged duration of the twisted sector. Now, we can just write down the superderivative relation. Superderivative anti commute with supercharge. But that relation has exact, almost the same as this one, except that derivative operator change sign. Now, how can we generalize to the gauge theory? I'm, I'm just now in the continuum theory. Using this super derivative, we add super connection. And, and then in C, and then we consider that we have introduced gauge in gauge theory. The super covariant derivative is defined in this way. Super derivative plus super connection. There are 16 of them corresponding to the super derivative. So this super derivative relation is changed into this way. Super connection anti-commutator is defining now the delta plus mu, which we call it super uh, connection, covariant, covariant connection, which is uh, the Leading term is a standard covariant derivative, but it has a super connection corresponding to this part. Uh, so, and then lowest component, which I mean that the uh, super coordinate is taken to be zero, then that should be remute, which came from the sex state component. Now, corresponding to this super, uh, Super derivative relation, we grade up, grade up to the to include the gauge, gauge symmetry in this way to the super connection commutator, anti commutator. So here, others means that, for example, d, d tilde anti commutator is zero. But in order to accommodate this sex set sector, we have to introduce scalar covariant derivative or delta delta tilde sector. These are the sort of the continuum super connection hazards. The question is can we construct uh, any group for super enemies by, by this hazards or not? That is the question. Essentially what we do is rather simple. We have defined two super connection defined covariant derivative derivative delta plus minus w, w and f. Now, introducing related to Jacobi identity, three number. This defines, since number is a family, so three number is a family sector. So, fermions are defined in this way. But in addition to that, Super trans Suji transformation of this one needs three lam na lam number two. So Suji transformation of this guy can be defined also. The four number related to Jacobi identity will give Suji transformation of payments and the extra constraint. So if I define Suji transformation to the field, simply as a number of a commutator or anti-commutator for the field. If I define this as a Suji transformation, it turns out that Suji algebra closes. Closes with the equation of motion, which means that the algebra closes on several level. So we can construct n equal four Suji algebra closed on on several level. An action can be obtained in this way. This is still continuum formulation. And then the, this continuum, uh, the Akira twisted super action has 16 supercharged invariants. Now the question is uh, how do we generalize to the, the radius? 
that's why I mean two dimension this consistent the, the con consistency relation for the replacing replacement is the what is the difference operator consistent relation can be written now in this way that can be solved consistently and uh, symmetric short solution can be given this way all these 16 uh, side uh, shift vectors are pointing to the dual side, neighboring dual side. And then super connection can be introduced similarly. Now, however, there are some difference from lattice QCD, which is covariant derivative term plus real component is added for imaginary with respect to the new page field is added because this came from the super connection contribution term. That is exponentiated, which means that you think being variable is not anymore unitary. You, you don't know it's not one anymore. And we can define the gauge transformation in this way on the right hand side and left hand side is the inverse. For the super connection and the similar, so that as you can imagine, this Suji relation of the helical power algebra can be defined through super derivative to the super covariant derivative and uh, covariant derivative and the scalar part of the covariant de derivative introduced. This is exactly similar to contain formulation except that now shifting the nature is introduced. The product is the product which I define is a shift nature. And then super connection and that and the Jacobi identity are constructed. The number I will define U plus minus mu and the scalar connection WF scalar covariant derivative sorry. And three number will define the fermions and also the Suji transformation of this field. Four number will define the fermion Suji transformation plus extra conditions. The reason why extra condition comes out is that because in four dimensional n equal four, uh, the super, super space formalism is not known. So official level invariance is not realized. And Suji transformation can be defined in this way with shifting nature. And uh, link variable and uh, covariant, scalar covariant derivative fermions have this Suji transformation, which, which can be derived by the graded Jacobi identity. And Suji algebra is crossed with respect to the field for fermions and bosons. Or especially for the bosons, it is crossed of shell level. But for the fermions, we need an equation of motion to, to prove the closure. So it is a medical postology. In this case, is on shell level. Uh, this link approach formulation has a very nice feature in the sense that the geometrical location of the fields are just determined by automatically by graded Jacobi identity. These are the original site. And these are the family dual site. Dual site and original site are related by dual feminic link where feminines are sitting. Both of them are sitting on the, this link field here and here. And the bosonic scalar component is sitting on the side. And so on. So very nicely, the location of the uh, <coughs> field are just uh, determined geometrically by Jacob, related to Jacobi identity. 
this is a sort of the ego for supplying the action on the lattice we propose. And uh, as you can see, there are bracket term which gives the young news. But since u u dama is not one, there is zero area bracket term as well. And uh, there are other three component terms which fermions are included. As you can see, all the terms are just uh, crossed new groups. X, X plus A mu, X plus A mu, X. So it comes back to the same X all the time, which means that uh, uh, in order to keep the gauging variance, the loop should be, okay, includes should be crossed. And these are all, these are the triangle part. They are just all crossed loops. The transformation of the field can be defined this way. Number A operated on phi is essentially the Suzy transformation corresponding to number, and which has a shift nature. We can show that SA operation to the lattice action vanishes for all SA, which looks like uh, SA has an exact supersymmetry for all supercharges. This sounds like exact lattice suit invariance for all the supercharges. However, the CO equivalent to number A carries a shift AA. Therefore, the SA operation to the action generates a link hole X, X plus AA or X plus AAX. Because the uh, action is a summation of the link roots. When you, you operate some SA or number A, it makes a hole of the ring. So that uh, the, at the end, edge of the ring, there is a gauge transformation. So gauge variant, after the Suzy operation, the term becomes gauge variant. When it is gauge variant, then when you integrate gauge field, then it just vanishes. So with a different reason, the Suzy operation vanishes. This is because the action is summation of cross string groups. Furthermore, gauging variance is lost after a separation. Just what I just explained. How do we cure this problem? But uh, it looks like exact Suzy is realized by this formulation. With this notice, we in, in the beginning we said that uh, Suji can be exactly realized on the lattice. But that was uh, wrong with this uh, reason. The question is how do, we, how do we cure it? We introduce local Suji link parameter, show A, which has a local link nature, x, x plus A, A dependence. But it's no abelian now, so it has uh, no abelian suffix, which has an opposite shift of number A and carry gauge suffixes. So we call, claim this is a correct Suzy transformation. Number A by A terms for the previous definition of the Suzy transformation. We multiply it from A called Suzy parameter. What is different from the standard Suzy transformation is that epsilon is not very constant. It is x, x plus a, y dependence. This is a crucial difference from the standard Suzy transformation. And because of this reason that the phi change has the same statistics, which we missed in the beginning. So, let, let, let us suppose for simplicity that the action is a product of three fields. Generalization to four fields is trivial. So suppose uh, this is action, which has a three field. If I operate 
Suzy transformation for this one, phi 1, phi 2, phi 2 is each separately transformed <coughs> by this Suzy, this expression. If I just pull this expression A to far to the left, then I need, I need a commutator here. The first term is the one which I just shifted to to the far to the right. We know that this is so invariant because of our the previous definition of the supersymmetry <coughs> transformation. This one is zero, but this one is not zero anymore because this is gauging, this should be gauge invariant so that the epsilon should have been nature. In the <coughs> continuum case, since epsilon doesn't have the nature, it's, it's completely local. So that one can take epsilon A to be A constant. Therefore, this is zero. But since we have introduced the link nature, this does not this does not vanish. And that's the origin of the break, the Suzy break. So let me summarize. Uh, no abelian gauge group case. Since epsilon A should be local and gauge variant being superparameter, I and epsilon A commutator or anti commutator does not vanish. And therefore, exact Suzy variance for this A is lost on the line. However, if I choose one of the shift operate shift vector to be zero, one of them one of them I can take to be zero. Then if shown A is not in parameter anymore, it is just like a continuum case, so that I can take the constant periodic parameter, so that pi and pi and shown is commutable, even though even for no variance. So in this way, I can say that one of the one of the sixteen supercharges can be kept exact, and the corresponding shift vector vanishes. So, unfortunately, sixteen supercharge exact symmetry is lost. Only one of them is realized. However, if the group is a uh, abelian. This relation, pi i epsilon a commutation relation, is zero because of this uh, ordering equivalence class identification. This is a relation that, uh, uh, when, even if you change the order, if you respect the shift nature, it is okay. But no American case, no American nature is not com is. Uh, there. Therefore, that was the mistake. But the Armenian case, it is okay. And also, the field inter interchange is also, this is an <coughs> ordering the equivalence class identification. However, link, link variable, which is a covariant derivative, does not, does not com commit with this. That will remain in the action. So, Armenian action is invariant for all supercharges with the modern equivalence class identification. So, let me conclude and summarize. We have formulated four dimensional any form so, twisted super M is the lattice by the link approach. Any one of any 16 supercharges can be made exactly supersymmetric. Ordering equivalence class identification is defined to some ordering ambiguity of the product of trees. U1 case uh, is 16 supercharge exact is realized. Local superparameter ha having link nature are introduced to keep gauge invariance of the action before and after the Suzy transformation. And there is one last comment. In order to cancel the terms, including the local superparameter, we may need supergravity contribution to realize the exact radius solution. So probably, since uh, link nature is local, we need gravity contribution to cancel to realize the exact solution 
after the regularization. Thank you. Any view calculation, you use this uh, formulation. Equivalent deviation. No, calculation, computation. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. Monte Carlo or whatever. Second question is. Uh, ah, you mean numerically it's post feasible or not? That's yeah. the question. I mean, since you have the formulation. Ah, so, can you see something uh, interesting from this? Uh, N equal 4, so far, numerical calculation. I think this is possible. Uh, N equal 4. For so far, has been done uh, single Kaplan's formulation, which is uh, one of the supercharge which is Q square equals zero is kept exact. But since other supercharge are not exactly kept, so that uh, we have to do fine tuning. This is very difficult. Fine tuning means that in order to adjust the parameter. Since there is no supercharge exact symmetry, in order to adjust them, we need a, we need a adjusting numerically. Uh, why do you have just just use this. Uh, you can just compute uh, compute this and see. Yes, but uh, in order to go to, in order to realize supersymmetry, you have to go to the continuum limit. In order to go, to go to the continuum limit, you have to tune the parameter in such a way that suji is kept. Because uh, it's, it's the other suji part is broken, so you have to keep it. Each time, you have to tune the parameter to be zero. That is difficult. It's just a current issue. So unfortunately, uh, it is not exact. So that the uh, non suji part should be tuned. This is the one difficult. What was the second? Uh, yeah, so question. Uh, let's say, uh, I mean, people in KEK, like Ishimura san, they have been doing Monte Carlo computation with the matrix model, which is super, super symmetric. Yes. So do, can you comment on what they do and how, how is that different from yours? The actually, there was a nice uh, calculation of the gravity prediction, both by their formulation and the Suji formulation. They gave the same answer. Uh, what do I mean? 16 supercharged case. There, there is a prediction for the gravity. Space time dimension. Hmm? There's a preference on the emergence of a female spontaneous space time is what they so yes. yes. Can I comment on that? Yeah. Did they have to do it? So the super symmetry matrix model is perfectly okay, but it's not a fee theory. So this is why there isn't a problem. No, you cannot compare it. Also think it's right. yeah. No, 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 no. I, I don't think you can compare it. No, so no, no. The symmetric model is completely straightforward and well known. And this does not solve really that problem. <coughs> there are two two independent calculations for the prediction of the gravity distribution. The two two calculation com completely coincide. So their formulation is nice in the, in this way also. Which means that the uh, uh, Kaplan formulation is uh, one of the suji is kept. The others are uh, they don't 
they, they cannot control. Oh, so In our control. case, any one of them would be uh, is okay. So it's equally weighted. So probably formulation-wise, numerically, it would be it would be better. But uh, so uh, how do you try the strong coupling? No, no. If some part of C is kept, maybe it is some coupling. Yeah, in some coupling. It's a good question. Yeah. Yes. It's I a good check on. Yeah, yeah, probably. Anything about the conformal symmetry? Conformal symmetry? Yeah. How do you generate the generalization of this? After any cost forward motivation, is the conformal field? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.